Hi, in this video I'll be doing an informal test of the power density for these three different types of earphones. Now on the left hand side I've got the Mpao Jaws. This is using Bluetooth version 5.0. I then have the Mpao Flame. This is using Bluetooth 5.0. And over here I have an older earphone which is the Anker Sound Buds using Bluetooth 4.0. I'm going to connect all of these to this cell phone. This is an LG V40 cell phone which has Bluetooth 5.0, it has A2 DPLE and aptX. Now in order for me to measure the power density I'm going to be using this little meter. It's the GQ EMF 390 and if you have a look at the display you can see that it gives you three types of measurements. You can measure EMF, EF and RF. I'm going to be using the RF setting and I've set the units to milliwatt per meter squared. Now these RF meters are quite directional and are very sensitive to the placement of the meter in terms of where you put it near the RF radiating device. Now I'm just going to open this up and show you where the antenna is of this meter. Right, so looking at the back you can see there's an RF antenna and then I've got three more over here. So what you'll notice in this test is that when I put the earphones very close to the antenna, you'll see that the RF signal strength is much higher. So I'm going to try to be as consistent as possible, but also what impacts RF measurements is the environment. For example, if my hand is on the meter, for example, if I'm in the way between the earphones and the phone and things like that. Right, my phone is in flight mode. And you can see that there is no RF signal being picked up. You can see that it says RF 0.001 and there's no movement here at all. Now as I activate my phone and I take it out of flight mode, you can see immediately it is picking up and it even says there Wi-Fi or phone. And you can see that it's coming up with 1185 milliwatt per meter squared. Now yes, when you switch on a phone for the first time, it generally has a higher power density as it's registering with the nearby base station and there's Wi-Fi for example there's a Wi-Fi link and in this case the Bluetooth is also on. Right now you can see it's gone to what would be closer to a steady state and you can see that it even says they're normal then it goes high. Now this is a common thing with cell phones you get this intermittent transmission it transmits then it stops then it transmits and then it stops. So this is quite normal, it goes from high to normal, high to normal. Now I'm not doing a test on cell phone radiation, what I want to do is just the Bluetooth. So I need to have my phone on flight mode. So I've now set my phone to flight mode, you can see the Wi-Fi is off, but I do want the Bluetooth to be on. So for the remainder of this test I will be switching the Bluetooth on, there you can see, and as I switch it on, you are going to notice that the signal is being picked up by the meter as the phone now starts transmitting its Bluetooth. Because if there was a nearby device, for example a headset, then it would be able to pair with the phone because it can pick up the RF signal. Right, so these earphones are all off at the moment and the first test is just to measure what the power density is with the phone near the meter. So I'm going to put the meter on top of the phone like that and you can see that just with the Bluetooth on, there we get a value of between 5 and 10 and it comes and goes. You can see there it's coming on again and then it goes off and it'll probably come on again and it's like it's polling to make sure if there's any Bluetooth device that is looking for the phone they will be able to pick up the phone. Right now what I want to do is just show you that this meter is very sensitive because if I change the orientation of the meter you can see how the uh, power density changes. Now as I said the RF antenna in this device is sitting here Right, now I'm going to first start with these earphones. This is the flame and I'm going to switch them on and I'm going to connect. Right, so they are now connected and I'm going to choose some music that is on my device already. I'm not streaming, this is stored on the memory card. Right, so I can actually hear the music in the earphones. I'm going to take the earphones to one side and I'm just going to measure the cell phone power density for this Bluetooth. Now I'm also going to put the screen off. Right, the screen is in the sleep mode and this is the Bluetooth power density just for the earphones which are now one meter away from the phone. Now this table is plastic. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the phone at a slight angle. 
Right, so the earphones are one meter away and you can see that just with the Bluetooth on the phone, you can see that it is 180, 185, 182 milliwatts per meter squared, which is quite high. Right, as high as 200. Now I'm going to turn the phone the other way. And you can see that just by flipping the phone around, you can see that the signal strength or the power density has reduced considerably. So obviously the Bluetooth radio is now further away from the antenna of the meter. Because when I flip it around again, look at that. You can see that it is significantly higher. So that's just to show how sensitive the meter is and the placement of the phone to the meter and how it affects the power density. Right, now let's take a measurement of the Bluetooth earphones themselves. Right, so I'm just zeroing the measurement. Why I'm doing that is the phone is far away, the Bluetooth earphones are far away, just to make sure there's no other interference coming from another source. Right, the phone is one meter away, it's still in flight mode, and now I'm bringing the earphones close to the meter. Right, so we can see that the power density is still below 10 milliwatts per meter squared, and it seems quite stable, and I think every now and then you might see a high pulse. There we saw it, it said 20, and that will keep happening. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put these in the place where it's closest to the RF antenna. Right, it is close to where the RF antenna is, and you can see that it is higher now, but still below 10 milliwatts, and the meter even says normal. And now what I'm going to do is put it upside down, like that. So now the earphones are underneath the meter, almost having to travel through the meter in order to get to the phone. You can see that the power dissipated is actually quite a bit higher. Now it's coming up as high all the time. And you can see that the peak is also much higher. Look at the peak pulse, 211. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the phone and put it five meters away from the meter. All right, so the phone is five meters away and it's behind a wall. So we've got five meters behind a wall and we can see that it is still measuring kind of the same. It is still measuring above 10 milliwatts per meter squared. Right, so now I've changed to the power jaws. Yeah, they are. This is the headset. All right, I'm going to place it there close to the corner where I had the other headset. And I've now switched on the music. It is now transmitting to the headset and the phone is one meter away. Right, so we can see a similar response and also note that every now and then there's that high peak. There you can see there's a pulse of 50 odd milliwatts per meter squared and that keeps happening every now and then. Right, so now I've paired the older Anker sound buds using Bluetooth 4.0 and I'm just going to take a similar measurement. Right, so I'm going to put the earphones right on the corner where the other ones were. There you can see the RF radiated power. So, so far this is quite a lot higher. I don't know if it's because of the different Bluetooth version. This is version 4 while the other one was version 5. And if I put it underneath the meter, Right, so when it's underneath the meter, it's significantly different. Look at that. It's below 10 milliwatts per meter squared. And if I put it on top of the meter, again, quite a lot higher, 37 milliwatts per meter. What I've done is I've put these in a different orientation. The reason being is that power density seemed quite a lot higher than the other two earphones. So I flipped these around and look at that. It's dropped quite a lot. And if I put them sideways... There it's high again. Now there's a lot of things to consider here. Polar patterns, direction from the phone, whether it's line of sight or not, reflections from nearby walls and things like that. I'm right, I'm bringing the Empower Jaws back because I just want to do a second test and I want to see if this does get higher based on how I orientate it. Right, with this type of headset, you can see that it's got these two sides. Now, the RF antenna inside here is only going to be on the one side. There it's measuring about eight and a half. And if I flip this round, you can see that it is much lower. And if I just put the little speakers here and the controller over here, you can see that it is still picking up, but it isn't very high. It's below three. Now, if I leave these here and I bring this still below three, and if I bring the other side, that must be where the Bluetooth radio is. As you can see, look at that. 
So it's very sensitive to the placement because if I shift it a little bit further back, look at that, barely seven. But if I shift this a bit closer, right, so now in this case, the Bluetooth transmitter is very close to the receiver of the meter. Look how high that pulse is, 530, 445. Um, these are very informal tests. It's just interesting to see how much power density is radiated from Bluetooth headsets. Now, these are done just in the air, but when you put the earphones into your ears, that's obviously going to change the transmissions and the power density because of the human head and the attenuation caused by the human tissue, such as the skin and the brains and the skull, etc. Right, so comparing it to a cell phone, I now have a cell phone with a Wi-Fi on, you can see that a cell phone is considerably higher, although it does drop down, then it peaks up again, then it does drop down, and then it picks up again. So it's definitely asynchronous. All right, so there you can see some comparisons. These are very informal, but interesting nevertheless. And thanks for watching and cheers.